Welcome everyone to the second talk of the academic track. Um, uh, my name is Christina Ludwig. I'm a member of the scientific committee this year for the state of the map. Um, I'm uh, working in Heidelberg at the GS Science Research Group at Heidelberg University. Some of you may remember it from two years ago where the state of the map uh, took place. Um, so the next talk um, is titled, What has machine learning ever done for us? It will be given by Peter Mooney. Uh, he's an assistant professor of computer science at Maynooth University in Ireland, where his research lies at the intersection of computer science and geocomputation. He has been actively involved in research related to OpenStreetMap since 2008. He has been a participant in the academic track of State of the Map since it began and is also an author or co-author of several impactful OpenStreetMap publications. So, Peter, go ahead. Hello, and welcome to our presentation for State of the Map 2021. My name is Peter Mooney, and on behalf of my collaborator and colleague, Edgar Galvan, we bring you the results of our research from the Department of Computer Science in Maynooth University in Ireland. And this presentation today is putting the question forward about what has machine learning ever done for us? Now, what we really mean here, and it is an accidental Monty Python reference, is what has machine learning ever done for us where us equals the OpenStreetMap community. And what we've seen, and it's, it's well known now amongst almost anyone who has an interest in computing and digital technologies today, that machine learning uh, is certainly a key approach to problem solving for a wide range of problems, which some authors say defy manual solutions. So the traditional ways of developing solutions to problems don't seem to work, whereas machine learning as a methodology seems to work much better, delivers new results, delivers interesting results, and maybe delivers results where we didn't think we could provide a solution previously. Now, there has been a lot of academic interest and academic research energy invested into machine learning over the last decade and even further back for areas such as natural language processing, remote sensing, image processing. But the question we want to ask in this presentation and deliver in this video presentation is, given all of this academic research that has been carried out, using machine learning with for OpenStreetMap, what are the implications? What are the benefits or outcomes for the OpenStreetMap project or community? So there's been a lot of research carried out using machine learning with or for OpenStreetMap or using OpenStreetMap data. But basically, is there a benefit? Is there some type of value to be gained from the OpenStreetMap project? and the community for all this work. So there are many, many machine learning applications, and many of these have been using OpenStreetMap over the past decade and beyond. But one of the questions we'd like to ask ourselves here is, how many of these approaches could potentially be adopted or used by the OpenStreetMap community? It would seem like a very sensible approach that academia and academics, researchers, developing solutions based on research and development, that the outputs of that work could be used by the OpenStreetMap community and the OpenStreetMap project. And basically, we want to ask a further question, the benefits or impacts of these efforts from the research community. Can the OpenStreetMap community and project feel the benefits and impact of all of that work. So to give a quick overview of this video presentation, we're going to look at a methodology that we've outlined which, in which we have performed a literature search of academic papers on this topic. We'd like to outline the process to you, 
discuss some of our findings and observations. What did we learn? What can we work on next? And that brings us to the end where we deliver some discussion points and next steps. Basically, where can this research move to for its next step in the research development cycle? So our methodology, as I said, we carried out a reasonably rigorous literature search and we used Google Scholar for the search here in May 2021. We simply searched for machine learning and OpenStreetMap and we used the results that were returned from Google Scholar and processed them in, in linear fashion. We had to do a manual check and selection on the results because we wanted to make sure a number of criteria were comfortably adhered to by the paper. So firstly, the paper must be relevant to OpenStreetMap in some way. It also must contain a significant machine learning component or have machine learning approaches. And we are not going to involve literature reviews because we want to look at papers which are very much focused on development of an application or an approach rather than a meta review of all of the other work. We have a maintained list of papers which will be available on GitHub. We understand that this is quite a small sample. It is representative in the case that we believe that it has good characteristics of a realistic and sample which can allow us to explore the questions that we have talked about a few moments ago. Obviously, we admit a larger corpus of papers could absolutely be created. And of course, we'd need more resources in terms of researcher time and energy to actually go through all of these papers and consider what their meaning is for machine learning and OpenStreetMap. So the paper, each individual paper must have that significant machine learning component. And OpenStreetMap data must be used in some significant way, maybe as a training data set, maybe as the target data set for some type of output. It might be used to validate or test a machine learning component or a machine learning approach. We have to allow for situations where OSM is not the only data uh, set used. We allow for situations where OpenStreetMap is used as the source of data, which has been integrated with other data sets, both spatial and non-spatial, for the purposes of developing training uh, data sets or validation data sets for those machine learning approaches. We have a GitHub a repository with some resources in there. You will find a link to these on our state of the map academic track proceedings paper, which is available open access uh, via the links provided in the proceedings. Our sample set, as we said earlier, was taken from uh, Google Scholar searching. We selected 50 papers. We needed to remove five of these because they had no OSM con content. Perhaps these papers may have used OpenStreetMap base maps, which were only used to display the results of some analysis. Or some of these five papers were literature review papers. So that meant we had to uh, extend further into the search results and take five additional papers. So we've 50 papers in total. The process, we made some assumptions for our processing of these papers. Of course, our sample size is small, but we feel, just our own personal opinion, that it is a good representation. There isn't over-representation from one particular research group or researchers or subject area. We have made some classifications, and we believe that they are potentially subjective and naturally could include some bias. So we are not claiming that they are any way, in any way uh, indestructible. We just use these classifications in order to get some type of feeling for the evidence to support our question and to deliver some answers to our question about the influence and impact of machine learning 
on the OpenStreetMap project and community. We do not evaluate the results of the paper, each individual paper. The accuracy, the achieved results, etc., are accepted as is. So we don't drill down to check whether the results make sense. That's for another day. So we don't advocate any specific machine learning approaches. And we did try to cross-check our classifications to make sure that we were somehow in agreement for most of the, the work on this literature review. So some of our findings and observations. The paper shown here in front of us by John Vargas and his uh, colleagues from 2021, which is available as open access, is a, a wide-reaching review of OpenStreetMap in with machine learning and remote sensing. And the paper's authors suggest that OpenStreetMap is used in, in two key ways. One is to improve the coverage and quality of OSM by using GIS and remote sensing. Secondly, OSM is used itself, the data of OSM is used in order to train models for machine learning in order to serve some applications. Now, the way we interpret this is we are just using the red font because we are not specifically constraining ourselves to image related data. So we are working at looking at the coverage and quality of OSM, but also using existing OSM layers or, or teams or data sets to train models on that data in order to serve applications. Now, what we did find was that if we looked at those two classifications, improving the coverage and quality, or else the use of OSM, in training models to serve applications. We found a split as follows, that about 23 papers looked to be trying to improve the coverage and quality of OSM with machine learning approaches, whereas 31 papers were looking at using existing OSM data to serve different types of applications, which we'll talk about in a few moments. Two papers here were uh, complementary to both, where they had approaches which were dealing with both of the situations that we see here on the slide in front of us. The two papers which served both criteria are, are shown above. And you can see that even from the, the titles that they are both trying to work with approaches that would improve coverage and quality of OSM, but also the two papers there use OSM as a means of training their machine learning models in order to serve some applications. And those applications may be simply data quality improvement applications. In the coverage and quality of OSM, the 23 papers that we, we talked about that which improved the coverage and quality of OSM. We decided to implement our own classification here on what type of coverage and quality investigation was being carried out. So we looked at contribution patterns, data quality issues, annotation, tagging, geometry, and topological issues. Now we completely agree that these are not mutually exclusive and many of them could be uh, encapsulated in in other type of classification. So we we realize that there is many ways to arrange these type of classifications. But we found that annotation and tagging was probably the most popular out of these, with 14 papers out of 23 were involved uh, in coverage and quality. So with 23 papers, 14 of those were involved in uh, tagging and annotation uh, approaches to try and improve or uh, contribute to tagging in OpenStreetMap. The using OSM in machine learning training and applications, again, we used our own classification here because one did not exist really. And we have decided to pick five classes navigation and transportation, where OSM 
is being used for training as part of training data sets, as socioeconomic uh, applications in image analysis, and the other category simply picks up the papers which do not really fit into the other four classes very easily. And there are some very novel applications here, electric vehicle routing, for example, in navigation, training data sets using OpenStreetMap polygons and polylines in order to create street blocks, training sample for built up areas and analysis like that, socioeconomic indicators, generating those and learning those from OpenStreetMap data, image analysis using OpenStreetMap tiles, but also using OpenStreetMap geometry to help label images, uh, map schools, etc. We and uh, I specifically worked with a number of my colleagues uh, on a paper in 2019 in State of the Map where uh, we published a paper in the State of the Map academic conference proceedings under Grinberger et al. And the link to the open access paper is below. And we asked about bridging the map, how we could explore interactions between academia and the mapping communities of OpenStreetMap. And there was a classification used there. And we have borrowed some of that for here that in the papers that we have looked at in our sample set, can we somehow uh, get some type of estimation of the understanding from the authors of the OSM community? Now, we understand that papers are often constrained around page limits and word limits, etc. So some articles, authors may have decided not to discuss the connection or understanding of the OpenStreetMap community. But we have looked at this classification here in five, four ways. OSM simply as a data source, OSM as a data source that's produced by people, by contributors. Maybe then deeper down OSM as an actual social data product, or there was no understanding or perception specified at all. So what we found in our results was most uh, dramatically maybe is that OSM is certainly acknowledged as a data source. There's no question about that, about half the papers. But at the same time, half the papers showed or described no understanding or perception of, the, of OSM in the paper. There may be reasons for this, but there was no clear de defined understanding or perception outlined for us in the paper, despite OSM playing some type of role in this research. If we just look at the machine learning uh, approaches used, there's huge variations, even in this small sample. And of course, the, the aim of this research is, is not to really uh, critique the machine learning approaches used, but we have put the most commonly encountered approaches up on the slide in front of us. Random forest approaches were certainly the most popular. Ensemble machine learning approaches were also very, very popular amongst the research papers. And then, particularly in the image analysis area, the convolutional neural networks, fully convolutional neural networks were, were very popular. Clustering, both supervised and unsupervised. And for other approaches, such as uh, boosting, and then for natural language, uh, LDA and similar approaches were used. And I have on the slide here, and it can be, uh, con you can consider looking at the paper, the example of how a classifier, how a machine learning classifier could be used uh, in object annotation in OpenStreetMap. And one of the final questions, could any of these approaches be reproduced or replicated within other areas within OSM? So could the OSM community take these approaches? and reuse them in some way. And we had a traffic light system here, red, where it'd be very difficult to replicate. That was eight papers. Amber, where replication is possible, but you may need access to certain APIs or data sets. And finally, green, where reproduction and replication is a priority of the work, and it was most certainly possible. And there was 13 papers 
with two excellent examples provided in front of us here, where description of the software, access to the data, the software code, etc., was a priority in both of those works. So next steps. Informally, there is incredible diversity, even within this small sample. OSM's ability in terms of a data set to integrate with others is probably a very key factor in this diversity. But many papers do point out data quality problems in OSM where machine learning could help, but don't actually suggest how their solution could be used to fix this problem. And we, we do find that it is difficult to ascertain how many of these approaches could be adopted by the OpenStreetMap community because of the fact that there is this maybe hidden or not identified lack of understanding or, or understanding of the OSM community in general. So we come back to our final question, what has machine learning ever done for us? Well, estimating the value that OpenStreetMap gives to the machine learning research community is actually incalculable. It provides incredible value. And many of the approaches that we've seen in the list of papers would lend themselves very well to implementation in OSM. Tag suggestions, directing mapper attention, indicating geometry issues, all of these are, are very appropriate. The ability to, for OSM to integrate with other data sets is another reason why the ability to use it in machine learning uh, is a very positive impact of OSM. It does remain difficult to understand how all of this knowledge could contribute effectively to the OpenStreetMap database and OpenStreetMap community. But as we talked about in our paper, Grinberger et al., uh, a few slides ago, this is an ongoing research issue that the research community, and we urge the research community to undertake to move this forward, to bring the two communities closer together. So thank you for watching, and I hope this video is useful to you now. You've, you've enjoyed it at the virtual conference, and please consult our proceedings paper for more details. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, um, Peter, thank you for this talk. It's a very interesting talk. Um, as a reminder, yeah, you can... Um, for the audience, you can um, post questions about the talk in the questions tab next to um, the screen or also in the chat. Um, I will keep an eye on it. In the meantime, okay, there's a question already. Um, Peter, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, yes. we can hear you as well. So the first question from uh, the audience is the lack of understanding or connection with the OSM community exists way before like diversity research, for example. What, uh, what to do about this? Okay, so I think we started with the difficult question first. Uh, we, we, we uh, including uh, many of us here in the academic track, we had a paper about this a couple of years ago to see how uh, the academic community and the OSM community could uh, interact better together, and uh, what would what would be the bridge that's required to build between both communities? And I suppose we haven't quite uh, made progress on on that front in figuring out uh, how we bring both communities uh, closer together. Something that uh, I think is a major there's a couple of major points that that I think we can bring forward is uh, continuing academic track uh, events like these that that uh, ensure that academics have a platform to share their work with the open street street map community and to interact uh, directly with them the second is as we pointed back to the slides on uh, reproducibility and replicability that approaches developed by academics are possible to be reproduced and replicated by those outside academia, because sometimes uh, academics have access to data sources and APIs and tools, 
which may not be openly available outside of academia or funded research. So I think that's another uh, important barrier that needs to be considered if you were building OpenStreetMap uh, research to consider how to be more inclusive in terms of the tools and data sets. So I suppose I, I don't have a, a clear answer on, on how to join the two communities, but I, I do think the, the answer probably lies in a combination of the, the factors that I've, I've just explained. But again, uh, it's, it's a multifaceted uh, solution that's required. Thank you for this answer. Yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress, that, but that's um, why we're here. Uh, so there's a second question. Um, were there any examples of local communities using machine learning approaches to map their own countries? Or were the papers mostly theoretical or about remote contributions? That, that's a great question. And in the small sample we had, we didn't see specific examples of that. So I certainly I don't claim to say that there are no examples existing. The majority, however, were considering uh, remote contributions or indeed uh, looking at the contributions of communities in, in a remote type of way. So uh, it's, it's, it's very possible that there are approaches documented out there in, in other literature that just escaped our our net with such a quite a small sample. Uh, but it was mostly theoretical remote approaches that we encountered in, in our sample. Thank you. Um, so there are no more questions from the audience right now. So I will go ahead with some questions um, from um, our academic comedy. And in the meantime, yeah, you can post follow-up questions in, in the panel. Uh, so one question I had from the selection um, of the papers, did you also um, consider uh, like the, the number of citations or whether those papers were journal papers or conference papers, or did this those selection criteria change maybe in the course of the, of the study? Uh, so, when when we just do a search for machine learning and OpenStreetMap, you 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 retrieve a, a lot of results. But when you start filtering down, you realize that maybe uh, the paper is not at all about machine learning, or it's maybe a machine learning uh, application or approach that just uses maybe an OpenStreetMap base map or something. So we didn't try to be too prescriptive about whether the paper itself was a conference proceedings, was a, a journal paper, etc. We just simply, uh, as I explained, took the first 50 results that, that were returned and screened them carefully so that they did have what we believed was, was a, a, enough content in terms of machine learning and OpenStreetMap combined to be considered. Uh, I should have actually done that and, and checked the, you know, the classifications, how many were each. I, I'd, I'd imagine it, it was probably uh, the majority were, were journal-based articles, but there were certainly, uh, you know, more than, more than 20 out of 50 were journal articles. So and the remainder a mixture of of different type of of conference uh, proceedings. So that's certainly a great suggestion that we could we could uh, look at in terms of you know the citation rates, the the paper type itself for for future work. But we we, we felt that uh, in what results we were looking at coming back from from Google Scholar, we we did have to filter to make sure that we were getting a paper that was worthwhile in terms of actually uh, reading and including in our uh, small survey. Thank you. So there are three more questions from the audience. Um, I will start with the first one. How many papers were advocating for machine learning approaches related to human assistance in mapping rather than automated production of data? Uh, I don't have the numbers. Uh, I will be... Uh, the GitHub repository will be populated this evening and it'll be available through the academic track proceedings. I, I don't have a number on that. Uh, there, certainly, there certainly was a, a couple of examples where human assistance 
was included in in helping the machine learning approach in terms of training and in terms of you know building the the knowledge data set for the machine learning approach but there was i suppose a, probably a a slight direction towards this automatic uh, production of data and maybe more than the production of data but the suggestion of additional tags or a suggestion of of changes to geometry or maybe uh, issues around topology and and things like that so uh, there were there were certainly papers around using human assistance but they were there was quite few of them thank you so the next question um, is, my thesis is that there's also a lack of understanding to fully leverage the OSM data due to using tools as is and OSM tags by missing out alternate OSM tags. Do you agree? Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if I quite understand the connection of the question to the, the presentation, but I in our reading of the papers that dealt with with annotation and and tagging uh, in OpenStreetMap, there certainly was an effort uh, on the the behalf of the researchers to look at the OSM wiki, to look at map features, uh, tag info tools like this, to uh, try and understand properly and deeply what the tags actually meant, what they actually. Uh, could be interpreted as and how they were used. So the the lack of understanding. I'm 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 not sh I'm not sure if I can give a a full answer to that. There, I I, I do believe that in the work we 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 looked at, I I do believe there was an effort made by the authors to try and understand uh, tagging. Uh, the, sch the schema, et cetera, as best they could. And they did make an effort to uh, to do it rather than just uh, taking the, you know, downloading some data and simply making interpretations about the tagging rules or, or structures or guidance themselves. Thank you for this answer. So the next question is also a bit about the guest transferability of those machine learning models. Like, will the machine machine learning dif differ uh, in each country? Because as we know, every country has different characteristics. For example, to determine the highway classification, did you find anything about this in your study? Uh, not specifically, but what we did find was that some many of the approaches actually. Uh, did localize themselves to a Pacific country or region, so we we didn't we didn't find very many examples that, for example, looked at all of Europe or several countries uh, together. So what we what we seen was if there was a, a machine learning approach applied to OpenStreetMap data related to highways, for example, it was often localized to a Pacific country, city, or a combination of those. So that would probably have uh, managed to avoid some of those problems around uh, different countries having different classifications. The other approach was that this would be somehow taken care of uh, by the research approach in, in actually creating the training data set so that the authors would would try and figure out some kind of a way to uh, solve this problem if there was classification uh, if there was if it wasn't possible to synchronize the classification or somehow map them to each other some type of a, an approach would be used to uh, overcome this to allow the training set uh, data set be developed but I think the my short answer to that would be that it, most of the applications were very specifically based on a specific region. So maybe some of those problems were just avoided rather than solved. Do you maybe think like as a follow-up to this question that that might also be a reason why some of those developed methods to um, and solve the issues um, are not really 
taken into like are not really implemented on a larger scale for the whole OSM community that like those approaches that are, were developed are maybe not tested for different regions or larger regions? Yeah, that's a that's a very good suggestion. Uh, and certainly you, you, I cannot argue with it. I, I think uh, from, from what we've seen just in this small subset is that uh, there is a huge amount of work required to set up and tune and parameterize machine learning approaches. And of course, included in this is the, is the building of your training data set uh, right off before we start to do any validation or testing. So I, I suppose uh, it's, it's probably a, an opportunity that after this initial work is done of, of getting a successful or a reasonably effective machine learning approach up and running, then the next stage would be to fine tune it with those specific, you know, regional uh, regional specifications or, or, or issues which are specific to a certain city or, or, or country. But I, I think uh, so sometimes this information may just not be documented on the on the paper that we are reading, whereas there may have been some thought around around this these type of problems. Actually, it may have taken a lot of time to think about it before the, the training data sets or data set was actually created. So, uh, again, I, I think uh, more of an opportunity to to explain the, the process in greater detail would help, of course, uh, for us all to understand then what kind of assumptions or, or, or those type of understandings are included in the work. Thank you. So there's one more question. Um, what machine learning frameworks were mostly most commonly used in the papers you looked at? Uh, so I, I think PyTorch was very popular, uh, TensorFlow and, uh, Python-based machine learning was was very very popular. Uh, so we did we didn't count uh, we didn't count the approaches because not not every paper clearly stated the the approach they were using. We seen some approaches using using grass. We seen some uh, I suppose home cooked approaches where there's lots of different uh, frameworks feeding into each other, but. Certainly, just off the the top of my head, uh, the the obvious candidates: TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, and Python. Python and R based machine learning was by far the most popular. Thank you for that. Um, so we still have maybe three minutes. Um, so last chance to post questions. Um, in the meantime, maybe one more question um, to maybe like improve. Maybe that the, the the papers or the researchers are maybe more targeted towards like the issues that also maybe the OSM community is facing. Can you think of ways how the OSM community could maybe get more into contact um, with the the research or give feedback to the research? So like um, that we uh, that those, those targets from the research and from the OSM community are more aligned. Yeah, I think this probably goes back to our the opening question after my talk, and uh, I I still think it goes uh, deeply into uh, research, including people like myself and and all of us here from the academic track in making a bigger effort to ensure open access to our our work, both the data, our papers, uh, our software, and that will in, in turn then make our work more reproducible, more reusable uh, by others, not just the, the, the not just the OpenStreetMap community, by, by anyone who's interested in this. Uh, I think forums like this are a very important way of, of linking the two communities. Maybe there are opportunities for more of these type of meetings, maybe at a more regional basis over the, the course of a year between state of the maps so at a at a, a continental uh, state of the map for example or a, a a regional or national one and i think uh, i think there's a great opportunity here for the open street map community to say we have some very interesting problems here 
that we think would be useful for machine learning. And there is no better uh, specification of a problem than the, than, than the OpenStreetMap community telling us that this is the problem we have. This is our knowledge around that problem, but we're looking for a solution. And I think that would be a great a great way to work co-creating uh, a, a solution to a problem or problems. So I think uh, I would be excited about the op opportunities to look at problems which are suggested from the OpenStreetMap community rather than the top-down approach of academics picking what they see as potential problems or issues and trying to solve them. So uh, it probably goes back to our paper from a couple of years ago here in the academic track and maybe the first answer that I gave. Uh, it's an ongoing process, but I think a lot of progress has been made over the last four years. And, uh, you know, we look forward very positively for more interactions in the future. Great, thank you very much. I think there was a very good final words. There's still one question, but unfortunately we don't really have time anymore because we need to then prepare for the next talk. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. Um, uh, afterwards, you are still able to ask questions to Peter in the post-talk chat room, I suppose. So maybe uh, we can move the awesome data quality question um, there. Um, Again, thank you very much. Then um, the next talk um, will start in five minutes. Um, it will also be, of course, a very interesting topic and we'll be happy to see you or hear you there as well. See you then. <laughs>